The Cook Islands have announced their squad that they'll be using for the Pacific Championships in 2023. Let's take a look at the full squad list and then we'll highlight a few players. Now, I apologise in advance because I am going to mess up some of these names. Some of them are new to me. This is going to be an absolute mess, but I will do my best. So in the Cook Island squad, it includes Tevin Arona, Reese Dakin, Esam Ioka, Kadie Ioka, Kale Iro, Makahesi Makatoa, Justin Estal Makareri, Stephen Masters, Essen Masters, Alvin Maungati, Davy Moale, Takai Makaha, Malakai Morgan, Rua and Gatakari, Pride Peterson Rabati, Lucky Pokey Pokey, Ruben Porter, William Samuel, Brad Takarangi, Zane Tetavano, and Isaiah Cooper Tetavano. I sincerely apologise for the butchering of those names there. I will learn in time and become more familiar. There's a few that I knew about, but I'll get there, okay? I'll get there. Now, the first player that I want to highlight is Kale Iro. He is a fullback, can play at centre, can play on the wing, sometimes I believe, but is typically a fullback um, for the Cook Islands at least. Now, he played fullback during the World Cup last year. I think he was a very steady player, very solid. He did make my team of the week once or twice, possibly, back then. So, he put in some strong shifts. And to look at a couple stats from his three World Cup appearances, he had one try, two assists, 22 tackle breaks, average of 190 metres per game. And um, those games came against Wales, Papua New Guinea and Tonga. So, two very, very tough games in there. And a close matchup against Wales, which they won 18-12. Which I think was the only exact score that I predicted correctly of the entire World Cup. So, we take those. But to talk about Iroh as a player and not just look at the stats, I think one player that I'd compare him to in terms of how their World Cups went is probably Sonia Taruva. Now, it's not a completely equal comparison, but the, the reason why I compare those is that Taruva was put under a lot of pressure a lot of the time and dealt with it very well. And Iroh was the same. The Cook Islands couldn't really get an effective kicking game going a lot of the time. They ran the ball really hard through the middle, and they had their moments here and there, but Iro was put under a lot of pressure when he was playing at fullback. So I think when he had the ball, there were certainly moments that you know he was creating opportunities, and he can certainly do that again. Fiji aren't going to be impenetrable, and you know Papua New Guinea will need to make sure that their defense is strong enough. They won't be impenetrable either, but Iro as a player has a good step on him, has a good turn of pace. So if he finds a gap, if defences give him an opportunity to break through the line, he'll certainly take it. I think he's got the, the speed and the skill to do that. Whether he can take over a game, I don't know. He's still relatively inexperienced at the top level, and I would class this kind of tournament as top level. It's not Samoa, Australia, New Zealand, that kind of level, but you know what I mean. It's, it's a bigger stage for more people to witness him. So... He can have moments, but will he take over a game? Probably not. But I'm still excited to see what he can do, given how strong and reliable his performances were at the World Cup. The second player that I want to talk about is Davy Moale. Now, I'll just look at a few of his NRL stats as opposed to his World Cup stats. But last season, he had 17 NRL games. He averaged 28 post-contact meters per game. And he had a tackle efficiency of 93.8%, which is pretty damn strong. Um, one concern for me is that he only had one game with more than 40 minutes, which was a 54-minute game against the Dolphins in round 7. The only reason why it's a slight concern for me, and it's nothing major at all, is just that I think, given his experience at this point in the NRL, he's likely to be a starter. I think he's likely to get the number 8, the number 10 jersey for Cook Islands. So my only concern there is that how many minutes are you going to get from him? I think you can get a really strong hour out of him for each game. I, I think you certainly could, but we just haven't seen that. We've only seen a 54-minute game against the Dolphins, and then the next closest one, I think, was a 39-minute game. Now, he's not just getting scrapped where it's 5 minutes here, 10 minutes there. You know, he's getting solid games, minimum 15 minutes, on average about 20 to 30 minutes, so solid chunks of time. And he has typically been quite effective, strong runner of the ball, every time i think he has a fair few offloads as well so he's always looking to try and progress with the ball as much as possible i do certainly think he'll be a leader so it's not the end of the world that he hasn't had loads of big minutes in the nrl but given the amount of experience he's had now i think he's going to be relied on a lot as the key leader through the middle 
And from what I have seen in the short stints, there's no reason for me to believe that he can't do that job. He can't be that leader. There's going to be other guys there, of course, that I have less knowledge on. That is just a reflection on what I know about the Cook Islands and their players. But I certainly think what I've seen from Davy Moale, I think he, he has something to offer, certainly. Leadership may not be that, given he's only 20, but you never know, he could absolutely surprise me. The third and final player that I want to highlight is Essen Masters. Now, I think during the World Cup, he had a pretty decent campaign, certainly had some special moments and was quite effective, looked like a very competent player and leader, looked like one of the most experienced players, which I'm pretty sure he still is in terms of high-level appearances. So he's going to be one of those key players for the Cook Islands. Now, my only concern is that he's had quite a quiet year with the Huddersfield Giants. I was expecting big things for him, and I think a lot of Giants fans were quite excited when they heard about the signing because he was a, a fairly regular feature in the NRL, and he'd had a good World Cup campaign, but this year he's had, I think, two tries and three assists in 24 appearances. He's had a high number of carries, and that's come with a, a lot of meters, so he's quite high up on the in the stats for meters. But in terms of errors and penalties... It's, he's not like right near the top, but there's a decent chunk of those put together and that's not great viewing. One thing that I do think though for Masters is that given how the season's gone for the Huddersfield Giants, it wasn't perfect. Like it, it wasn't great. It got better towards the back end of the season, I will admit. But sometimes for players, whether it be, of course, in rugby league in this case, or sometimes even in football, if a player's not having a particularly good season, Sometimes it's good for them to kind of step away, step out of that environment and go into a new environment, new coach, new coaching staff, new group of players, new atmospheres, new stadiums, new country, and just try and just try and focus on the basics because you're kind of stripping things back and you're trying to work on things with a essentially a brand new team every time you, you take on an international game. So sometimes that helps to kind of strip things back Go into the basics, get your fundamentals right, and get back to playing your best rugby or football in another analogy. But I think Masters is an exceptionally talented player. He's still 27 years of age, so he's getting into those peak years now where we should be seeing his best rugby. And hopefully we see some good, uh, good stuff out of him for Huddersfield next season. But production levels need to be increased. And I think during this tournament, we will see... A much more aggressive Essen Masters. Which, when I've seen him be aggressive, especially for Cook Islands at the World Cup, even taking over the hooking responsibilities, like, that's not his job, and he just did it from time to time. He was very aggressive running at the line. A good step, good bit of pace off the mark, and he can certainly create some opportunities. So that is going to be it for this video. If you have any thoughts on who you would have included in the squad, who maybe shouldn't have made the squad, do let me know in the comments down below. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.